Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this new edition of the tutorial at the Kimberly Green Latin American and Caribbean Center. My name is Frank Moore. I'm the director of the Kimberly Green Latin American and Caribbean Center, and I'm joined by former president of Costa Rica, Luis Guillermo Solis, who this year has joined us, and we are very fortunate to have him this year as a distinguished visiting scholar. So one of the first things we're having him do is to join us in this tutorial of this new academic year. Thank you for being here, thank you for being at LAC, and thank you for doing this. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mora, and thank you all for receiving us wherever you are. I'm very honored to be at LAC and obviously uh, very interested in learning new things and sharing some of my experiences as, uh, as I partake of this community of academics. Well, thank you so much. So what we're going to do in the time that we have is talk a little bit about the relationship uh, and, and, and moving back and forth between politics and policy and academia. President Solis, of course, was president, but also served in a number of public positions, official positions within the Costa Rican government. But he is also a very distinguished and well-known scholar uh, and historian. So he is someone who has gravitated from one universe to, to the other. And so I thought it'd be interesting to have that kind of discussion and, and start the discussion by asking him, when you were being trained as a scholar and you were thinking of being a scholar, were you also thinking of maybe going into politics and policy? How did you transition? Why did you transition? Or is that something that just kind of happened in your life? Well, it, it all happened all at once because uh, when I first entered politics, I was a professor already, and I was invited to become the chief of staff of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Costa Rica at a time when our foreign policy was being uh, conditioned this by the Central year was this? this was 1984, okay. uh, 85, uh, although I did not uh, become a, a public servant until 19. 86 under the first in the in the first administration of President Oscar Arias, but it all came very naturally. I mean, he invited me. I was already a professor. I was studying the Central American crisis. Our foreign policy was going to be profoundly impacted by the events in the region, and so it happened. I mean, it was a uh, it was almost natural. Now, in in the United States and in other countries, it's very normal to see academics come yeah. and go. I mean, there's a sort of a uh, an evolving, the evolving door, door uh, <laughs> situation, and people are even very proud of that. In Latin America, that's not considered too, too, n too convenient at times because uh, they feel once you get in, into politics, somehow you're contaminated. And so, what did what did your colleagues in the policy world think of an academic coming in? And what did your academic friends think about you going into that space? Well, oh, both have reservations of their <laughs> own, so you're catch up in the worst, worst, worst possible scenario. Because the politicians are suspicious about an academic that comes into their field, yeah. you know, being naive and theoretical and uh, talking too much and not doing enough. Uh, sometimes you've been critical, uh, as it was my case, with the establishment. And so they don't like like that. And on the other hand, academics feel you're somehow betraying them. You're all abandoning. I remember my godmother, uh, who was an <laughs> academic, by the way. She was a foremost uh, Asian scholar in, in, in Latin America. Oh, oh. And uh, she was furious. I mean, she was really mad. She, sp <laughs> she st stopped talking to me like for two years because she felt I was going to abandon my career and it was not serious to get involved in policy making. You know, my, my own experience was, um, you know, I always thought that the policy people really didn't appreciate academics, and academics didn't really appreciate the policy I world, think you were right, right. yeah, sure. And there was a lot to be learned from both sides. And one of the things I've tried to do is sort of be an interlocutor so that those two communities can interact, because we both, you know, academics really need to engage the policy world and not reject it as your aunt or your godmother uh, yeah. did, and, and vice versa. I think the policy Absolutely. world will think, oh, these people work in sort of naive, abstract concepts, where well, those concepts can be also uh, very helpful. You become president. Does that, is your academic training, how did that inform you having the highest position in the, in the Costa Rican government? Oh, it was very important, not only because I knew a lot of people from both worlds, but also because they had the technical tools to understand problems better. Now, you know, because you, you have been in politics yourself and in high positions, 
that uh, when one is in that situation, you don't have time to go down and review the bibliographies right. and find right. new articles right. and, and, and check with right. your I mean, you have to make decisions, sometimes right. decisions that imply very serious impacts on people's lives. And, and you can just, cannot, you do not have the luxury that academics have of thinking things over. But on the other hand, you have a, an accumulated knowledge of, of things that you know that have happened. In my case, being a historian, it was tremendously useful to know um, some right. of the things I, because, well, even when history doesn't repeat itself, I'm convinced of that. I come from the French school of thinking that we, we go over cycles, not repetitions. Right. But, you know, the, the experience of uh, past crisis and how these were um, confronted by decision makers makes sense. I mean, you, you learn a lot from that. And, and you know that if you do certain things, probably the uh, outcome is going to be similar to what you had in the past. Yeah, curiosity is fundamental for a leader, isn't it? So oh, absolutely. Intellectual curiosity is, is fundamental to... to Plus the thinking, the frameworking of things. I mean, you end up knowing that, yes, things are urgent, but sometimes you have to just stop and say, wait a second, Absolutely. just think about it. Yes. What are we doing here? And people expect uh, you to decide. And, and people and expect you to decide, you know. and they, they expect you to decide fast, and sometimes they don't take care about details. And as we know, the devil is in the details. In the so details. you've left high office, and now you're back in the academic world. For good, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you thinking about now getting back into this space that you had left for a while? Well, I, I feel uh, honored to be back with my colleagues and to have the opportunity to learn of things that I did not know about when I was, um, I was present. Lots of new books, new insights into Latin America, Latin American economy, uh, et etc. Um, and at the same time, feeling uh, very good because I don't have the, the, the weight of the office on top of me. I mean, being present even in a small country like Costa Rica is an issue in terms of right. the amount of, of uh, responsibilities that one carries. So you, are you going in this time that you have, and we're going to keep you very busy during the year here, but, and we'll talk about that, but are you going to sort of reflect on those four years of your government and, and maybe write about it? I mean, what, what initial thoughts do you have about your four years? Well, I would like to think about the campaign that may be president first, other than the, than the uh, government itself. Because many things have the sediment before I can, can, I mean, there are ongoing debates in Costa Rica about what I did or what I didn't do, and I don't want to start writing a book on, on, on a propaganda approach to the Solis administration. But the campaign was a very successful campaign, it was an interesting campaign, it was a beautiful campaign. And it broke 70 years of bipartisan rule in my country. Right. And I think there's something to be learned mm. about that campaign and how we did it with very little money and with a tremendous impact uh, in, in popular support. Well, as I said, we're going to have uh, President Solis here for the next year. We will keep him very, very busy. Let me give you two events, two upcoming events where President Solis will be participating. He will be giving on September 13th at 6.30 at the Graham Center a sort of keynote speech on the future of the Americas. That sounds very interesting It's a big topic, yeah. Uh, I hope you can join us. It will be followed by a reception. And then on September 24th, uh, we will have an event on looking at the causes and consequences of uh, the Nicaraguan crisis. And President Solis will be there as a participant and I'll be moderating uh, the session. So stay tuned for all of his activities. He will be teaching in the spring, a graduate course in the spring, which he's preparing now. And so if students out there will be, be looking for that course to register in the spring. In the meantime, thank you again. So Lisa, it's great to have you uh, at LAC. Thank you very much, Frank. Good luck to all of us. Thank you. <laughs>